Okay, Rangers, y'all should rejoice right now because whether you know it or not, you are the most valuable javelin in any group. That's right, y'all. With the massive shield pool and armor pool to match, the Ranger powers through any incoming damage like the Colossus and dishes out their own high levels of punishment while providing support and combos for teammates, killing enemies quickly. What does this all mean? It means that with the proper build, the Ranger is nearly unkillable in Grandmaster 1. They provide all of the support that every other class needs, and because of the sheer survivability, they are honestly the most valuable javelin in any group. In any looter shooter or MMO, it's important to have a balanced group. And the fun comes in finding new builds and finding your perfect balance with your friends to destroy everything in your path. Part of that balance is having equal parts DPS and equal parts support. And Anthem is no different. The necessity of balance makes the Ranger the most viable product or javelin in this scenario. Keep in mind I said viable. Viable means capable of working successfully without fail mind. Meaning that with a good ranger or if you yourself are a good ranger, your group should never wipe. If you find yourself in a group with too much DPS or just not enough support, you might not have enough health or shields to even chain combos and put out damage. You'll just die quick. Too much support and enemies begin to laugh in your face. Having a bunch of thick boys is cool on the surface, but when we get to Grandmaster 2, the game changes from an all-out slugfest to a calculated sweep of a hostile area. And in my experience, having more than one Colossus is a waste of DPS in Grandmaster 2. So having a balanced group in this setting is the key to success here. And I know you want major DPS output, but that survivability is more important. This is where the Ranger comes into play. I main the Storm and I main the Ranger really, uh, both of them. My Storm is at 458, my Ranger is at 474. Uh, my optimal group setup would honestly be a Colossus, a Ranger, Interceptor, and a Storm. <laughs> I guess no surprise there, it's the good old fashioned. Really I say if, if, if they were good enough you could do two Storms instead of the uh, Interceptor and you have more DPS maybe, but with her mark she's now hitting. 1.7 million something like that and then even still from what I've seen they use the muster point from the ranger to get that much damage so even then it's a testament to show you how vital the ranger is to getting the most out of each character the reason for this setup is because it makes a balanced square in which the interceptor and the storm can fall back behind the two heavies in the front and they can just deal dps and provide support and remain unattacked from a distance it's very important because in Grandmaster 2, they can get one-shotted really easily. In fact, the maneuverability is very important, especially with the uh, Interceptor. Really in this formation, in that square formation where you would have the Colossus in front and you would have pretty much the Ranger to his side, the Ranger would be called in this formation an off tank. This is not a new concept. This was actually, you used to have this concept in the old wilds, uh, really in the vanilla wild days and stuff like that. Uh, the Shaman used to be an off tank. Let me explain. In Grandmaster 2 and even in Grandmaster 1, there are times when the Colossus just cannot take and should not take all of the damage. Having a second Colossus will effectively mitigate the damage, but the Colossus is less mobile and he has to be close to deal effective damage, meaning that he cannot escape incoming damage easily, nor can they deal damage outside of receiving damage. No matter what he does, he has to get close and he's going to get hit. So even if the second Colossus does amazing damage, he has to get hit to make it happen. And if they both die, it's normally a wipe. Especially in Grandmaster 2, it's really hard for the Storm and an Interceptor to, to come through with a revive like that. I've seen the Interceptor die back to back off the first Titan in Heart of Rage. So yeah, Interceptors go down really quick. Having a ranger as your off tank is literally like having Iron Man as your off tank. He's just as nimble as the other light javelins, however he can take nearly as much punishment as the Colossus if built correctly. He can flank quickly, deal major DPS, and take out turrets and snipers, and then return to the squad nearly as quickly as he left. For support, he has a clutch shield which needs to take way more damage, or he can boost weapon damage which in my opinion, 
It should boost all forms of damage, not just the weapon. Muster Point is a great ability, but Muster Point should boost all forms of damage, not just weapon. With my Ranger, I almost always tank Grandmaster 1, even if there's a Colossus in our group. I cannot count how many times I've led the charge with the Colossus friend, or by myself due to the lack of a Colossus, because you have a lot of people who like to have three storms in the group and no tank, but whatever works for you. Flank to destroy turrets or snipers while the Interceptor and Storm do their thing, sometimes they'll come with me. I'll clean up low level mobs, all the while setting toxic acid primer on non shieldy enemies, only to turn around and see the team dead. And my shields only be at half health. And if it is a Colossus on the team, he too is dead. Yeah, hit him on it. Boom! Yeah, get this assault right in your life. Yeah, prime it for the lightning. Yeah, come on, lightning. What the? What the f is going on back there, man? Oh, man. Oh. He's here. Oh. Alright. Yo, Slayer, I need you. Oh, uh, no. Uh, so I was like, nope. Oh. Yeah. Uh, all right, I got Slayer. I'm going to come get y'all. Hold up. Man, I'm full health, full shields. Don't trip. I'm coming. By General Tarsus armor, we shall make it. This acid is eating my back, though. What's up? Ah. All right. All right, Sauce. I'm stuck in a rock. And here we go. Lightning tether you to my life force, and you are alive. You got him, too? All right, good. All right, everybody's back up. That's a W in my book. Cool. Even more than that, the ranger can pop his shield and revive teammates. And if need be, he could just eat the bullets that finally penetrate the bubble. And then he proceeds to Iron Man rocket the enemies on the map, adding to the DPS and even crowd control because the enemies are knocked back for a moment. As if this wasn't enough, the masterwork component tip of the spear allows the ranger to heal his nearby allies for 40% armor whenever he lands a combo. A good ranger is always priming acid and nailing combo after combo, so next time you see a good ranger in your group, stick close. And for my fellow rangers out there, if you want max DPS and max survivability and even the ability to heal your teammates, here's the 504 Headbusters build for the most viable ranger. So we're going to go ahead and start with the grenade. For the grenade, I have the last argument. I would suggest go ahead and just use the last argument. I've tested to see if any other were viable, which they have their own viability, but for the most viable ranger, I would suggest go ahead and use the last argument. I started off with the masterwork version of the last argument, which had 125% gear roll, which is amazing. But then I found the legendary version, which I did the maps. It has more damage and it gives me a little bit more gear speed as well for the whole body so I kept that I tested a build with the ice grenade and the melee damage I think until melee damage gets buffed it's not really too viable but when it gets buffed it actually could be really viable because you can do a lot of melee damage as far as maybe even one shotting enemies especially if they decide to add another combo for the melee that would be good um, also I tried the fire grenades but again you would need a, a detonator and the detonators on the right hand side are not as good as the last argument all of the detonators are pretty good um, all of the abilities are pretty good when it comes down to the most viable we're looking at 700 percent ultimate charge which means every time you hit an enemy not every time you get a kill every time you hit an enemy and not one enemy but all enemies you hit with that one grenade you are now getting 700% ultimate charge for each enemy. So there are times where you can use the ultimate grenade and you'll have the ultimate back in about two or three grenade throws, if that. So that is the best one. 
this could be really interesting if it did maybe if it was a detonator or something like that but the secret missiles are or the secret grenade is not really viable when it comes to late game or in game so we go ahead and use the last argument legendary grenade we'll go ahead and skip weapons for right now next we have the assault launcher the assault launcher again i was working a melee build and Avengers Boon is very nice for that melee build because it take, helps take shields down really quick. The recharge is really quick. And I had a legendary roll with 75% gear damage. So that was a really nice roll. Also with the ice effect, it makes sure the ice grenades actually freeze. Again though, 700% ultimate damage is nice. And with this right hand side, I have no primer unless I'm using the tactical onslaught. So then it becomes very obvious. Still looking for the legendary version. Um, I've tried Argos Mace. The electric explosion doesn't even work half the time. And truth be told, unless the electric explosion gave you electric status or if it detonated something like that, maybe it would be more viable. But um, I, the blast missile does not combo anything, so that does not make it viable late game at all, unfortunately. Recurring Vengeance would be the same as Argos Mace in my opinion, um, or the Blast Missile. In this case we have the Seeking Missile which does the impact damage, you can boost your impact damage, but when it's all said and done, even Recurring Vengeance which does detonate, all it does is damage, you get the 100% charge, so you get technically, you can get 25,000 damage out of one, so you can probably get 50,000 damage total, which is good. But again, I can get 30,000 damage with one grenade, and that one grenade can prime my ult. I, I think the, the, the biggest crit I've seen with my grenade was 40, something was about 42 or 43,000. And the biggest thing again, we want to be priming. We want to make sure that we're providing support for all of our teammates. We want them to be able to combo. And also we want to make combos for ourselves. That way we can provide the healing support to the teammates which will bring us to the component section next. For the components, we have cross arms, which increases blast damage. This is important for the frag grenade. We lose the impact damage, but we don't have anything doing impact damage. So there's no worries at all. Next, we have Victor's Resolve, which is pretty much the same as cross arms, but it's just the masterwork version of it. And as you see, a multi-kill of three restores 25% of maximum armor. So that's potentially a lot of armor and again it also adds to the ranger being really unkillable next we have tip of the spear which provides the 50% damage increase to combos so it makes the ranger want to do combos but also it restores health to the teammates so it's very important and also it it makes for a real strategic and group style of play where you have to play really together and focus fire because you now are able to be healed if you take damage if you stay next to your important teammates okay so next we have general's favor which i love it increases my assault launcher recharge by 35 percent but also whenever i defeat an enemy with a melee my lb damage is 50 percent more now this is good when you have a good melee build but again it's hard to get melee kills in the later levels, but they're supposed to be reworking melee, so we'll see how that plays out. This is just another boost of damage for the assault launcher. And really, the biggest thing about all of these components is the shield and the armor that they give. They really give a tremendous amount of shield and armor, and it also adds to the rangers being unkillable. And finally, we have Vanguard's badge. Vanguard's badge increases melee damage by 30% and its electric effect. Again, this is really just so I can have the shield from it. Um, and we don't have a, a proper replacement for it that would be at the same level. So we just have to take the shield and the health bonus from it. And so for the support, this is very important for the support. It depends on what you're doing in your group. A lot of people would go ahead and straight up get the muster point because it does the, the damage bonus. I personally don't think the 20% damage bonus is that great. So I would go ahead and always take the Bulwark point because not only does it give you a shield, but it gives you 3000 health. And with this roll, I got 12% max armor with it. So again, it's just adding to make you even more unkillable as the Ranger. 
Now for the weapons, I would suggest to use the Divine Vengeance. That one right there. The Divine Vengeance, every four shots or every third weak point hit causes a large explosion. The best thing about that explosion is that it goes through any shields, it's elemental damage. So it does more damage and it's not mitigated by anything, it just does more damage because of that. However, I found a legendary death from above and instead of using the Divine Vengeance, I now use this because not only does it increase my weak point damage when I hover, but I also get 90% max shield. Yeah, I'm pretty unkillable. And for the pistol, or for the secondary weapon, I have the unending battle. And obviously because it increases my weapon damage and melee damage by a whopping 110%. When I'm in the thick of the battle, and there's nothing greater really, nothing better than that. Okay, last but not least, whenever I leave out, I always carry my sigil. And of course it's only in Grandmaster 1 and 2, but I always carry my purple armor sigil, my purple shield sigil, and my purple gear sigil. And the reason for that is because armor sigil obviously gives you more survivability. The shield sigil makes it so I can eat more bullets. And then the gear sigil allows me to get my grenade faster, which also means I get my alt faster. And also it just overall makes my gear faster, so even my RB it's the melee as well and uh i think even the all everything is affected by the gear signal if i'm not mistaken and that right there is the 504 headbusters guide on how to become unkillable as the ranger so next time you out there on the battlefield knocking heads off eating bullets reviving your teammates and earning purples for the hard work that you put in make sure you let them know where you found this information you heard me and see, look, I'm saying unkillable Ranger, but he's really only unkillable if you play discipline. Like, I, I play discipline, but sometimes I'll be wilding out, and next thing you know, the enemies get to doing some wild sh Headbusters Lounge is dedicated to getting better and being better. And it's also dedicated to helping viewers like yourself get better at what you love doing more. So we ask that if you found any of this information helpful or valuable, like, share, subscribe, and be sure to follow us on YouTube, Twitch, and Mixer so you can know when we go live. Thanks for watching.